Let's start us off with a patch. This patch. Leeson. I think these Leeson buffs are pretty big. Wait, wait, wait. The, the Leeson buffs didn't go through. These Leeson buffs are whatever, I think. Base move speed increase. Five. That is really big. Holy moly. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think this one is massive. Five, five move speed on a champion that has percentage qualifiers. I think this is a really big Nidalee buff. I think the, the Leeson buff... It was a lot bigger, the one that I saw uh, presented to me, where he would just get 10 flat damage on Q. Uh, this is like fine, but I don't think it's that big of a deal, honestly. I think Leeson will still remain the same. I think the, the, the more important thing is like if they adjust items. Uh, I think this Nidalee buff is really big. I, I, considering Renekton is running rampant as well, I think that it's a pretty big deal. Annie, Q base damage reduced from 80, uh, 10 base damage down, Q AP ratio reduced from 5%. Okay, so this is like a, this is like half percent, half percent, one percent nerf. Uh, I think that's okay. I think that Annie sometimes, Annie is rather difficult to play. It's, it's kind of funny. Uh, it's like Annie, it is easy, it's very easy to go into a game as Annie and be fine, like in solo queue. Like, if you don't have mechanical skill, playing Annie is very straightforward and good. But to master Annie, which is required for you to deliver at the highest level, you need to have very, very good spatial awareness. And you need to really leverage Fog of War and really, really understand how to play out the Wars of Attrition around mid and also control your Tibbers. And... To be winning games in solo queue with Annie, you can get away with so much more. But there is a lot, lot of nuance there to master because it is the same. It's like you can know how to throw a punch. But do you know how to throw a punch against a UFC level caliber fighter? Uh, he will react and everything is just turned up a notch. You get me? Uh, Annie is nerfed. I think there's a sort of 0 0.5, 1% nerf. I think this is like, I think that's okay. Gravitum slow duration from 3.5 seconds to 2.5. Okay, I think that's fair. Severum attack healing reduced from 2.5 to 9% to 2% to 7, 1%. I think that's fair too. Severum ability healing from 83. Okay, so wow, 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 wow. At the higher end, that's a pretty big nerf. Like later on in the game, when you're like queuing the wave, you, you pretty much got healed to full. Uh, I think this is a pretty, pretty hefty nerf on the Severum ability healing. Uh, turret, turret attack speed reduced from 08 to 064. So that's the last time we see people die like humanoid. Um, this is this is a pretty hefty nerf. This is a pretty hefty nerf, but I don't think that um, Aphelios will be out of the meta just yet. I think Aphelios still uh, fits a very specific role, and I still think he can fit that role. I think more importantly, we have to see how uh, the itemization plays out, because currently... In the state of static shiv and all the zapping and all the range and the for example ap zeri i think those things can be uh, very rough what is his role he is basically a champion that can do well in most games he has a lot of weapon selection can do well against tanks can can survive well and at the same time synergizes with every support in the game ivan W on hit base damage, it's like Aphelios of course, his biggest weakness is long range compositions, but they are being played so rarely by teams, it's like, when you've seen Aphelios play against like Ziggs, Jace comps, this champion can't play at all, and usually when you have the mid range champions, the mid range champions like Aphelios, Jinx, I don't say they're high range, I say, say they're mid range, because in my mind, the long range uh, champions are the ones like Jace, Zerath, Ziggs. These are the long range, right? Like Syndra E uh, qualifies in that because they, Aphelios needs to break their sphere of influence and he's outrange, right? But we rarely see those compositions go through. Ivern, W on hit base damage reduced from 30 to 20. Very deserved. A W on hit AP ratio reduced from 30% to 20%. Okay. Daisy slam base reduced from 40 to 80 to 20 to 60. Damn. That is a big nerf. Daisy MS reduced from 440 to 430. Well, to be honest, the fact that it's 440 is kind of mental. Uh, I think Ivern, Ivern was and is completely broken on 1312. Like, let me just show you guys what you can do uh, on Ivern, right? Just, just pulling this up, okay? It's like, there's this Night Harvester tech 
There's also OTPs playing Ivan Top, playing like Nash's Tooth, and completely going ballistic. It's like people are just going full AP, DPS, uh, because of the changes to Daisy. Like you can go Nash's Tooth, you can go Rylize, and your Daisy just completely won't be nice. Uh, this champion is completely broken and i think that when people catch on on some of the build diversity you can do on this champ uh you are definitely going to have a good time so in my mind i think these changes i think these nerfs are deserved but i still think ivan's going to be played the same way because i don't think this is going to pull him out of that box so i th still think that ivan's going to be broken here um the the w on hit base damage that kind of hits his support role but I don't think this kind of nerfs that AP, Nash's Tooth, Rylai's business that people are doing on Ivan. So keep keep doing that. Like it hits that, but I think this hits support uh, a little bit bigger. Any Ivan in LEC you think? Uh, the thing is, uh, LEC, uh, Ivan is disabled. Base armor reduced from 29 to 26. Base health reduced from 610 to 580. That's a pretty hefty nerf. Considering a lot of the matchups Kindred is played in is against armor, uh, uh, physical damage dealing champions, and also how it affects her uh, healthiness in clear, I think this is a decent nerf. The ne next question is, of course, if uh, Trinity Force gets nerfed. Like, that's my question. I, I, didn't, I don't see any Trinity Force here, uh, but we continue. Uh, Nico Q cooldown increase from 7 flat to 9 to 7. Okay, you max this ability, but it hits early lane phase just a little bit. W on hit base damage change from 50 to 170 to 40 to 180. R now breaks disguise. I think this is the biggest quality of life change. I don't know if I, I'm using quality of life correct here, but uh, basically the most OP part about Nico, in my opinion, is when she is disguised, it hides the ultimate until it basically pulls people up. And this will now, when you ult, you now basically break your disguise and there's no like super minion combo that you can do. There's actually time to react. Similar to how you can react to an E Gragas flash, right? Maybe you have to preemptively flash or you have to predict it. And this is uh, the game that you can now play. Uh, this is a very, very positive change because I think that interaction was plain and simple broken. Uh, like I think that at the time uh, Caps got solo killed, I think this was a great example of... Uh, sorry, Niski got solo killed by Caps. I think this was a great example of how stupid uh, this... Uh, like the fact that it doesn't break the skies, uh, how, how that works. Rexa has been overperforming in solo queue. Uh, base attack damage reduced from 61 to 58. Base health reduced from 640 to 600. This is a pretty decent nerf. Um, I think that this is a pretty, pretty decent nerf. Um, I, I, I wonder if she needs more. I think I wonder if she needs more. Varus, W on hit AP ratio increased from 30%. To 35%, W detonation AP re ratio reduced from 2.5 per 100 AP to 1.5. Oh, so basically they want to move power into the virus that auto attacks you and they want to remove power from the virus that one shots you. And considering uh, the AP builds have gotten a lot stronger with static shift in the picture, I think uh, as the itemization becomes easier and better, because the big problem for Varus AP is that rushing Nash's Tooth isn't entirely comfortable. And and rushing the AD items like Noon Quiver and Kirsch's Shard is, is definitely stronger. But then again, I have I don't know what the Static Shiv uh, damage is just yet. Uh, okay. Vi, passive shield reduced from 30% max HP to 10%. R cooldown increased from 120 to 180 to 80 to 140, 90. Okay, 20 seconds cooldown down on R is a pretty big deal, but I don't think that Vi is going to be pushed out of the niche. And in a lot of games that are being played, usually in the early phase, when it comes to maybe on your six timer, it's like your six timer aligns with Rift Herald. And then if you think about the beats that you need to hit with Vi, it's like you need to reach six, you need to have ult on Herald. And then you need to have ult for second Drake. And usually if you can be selective in the fights that you take, such a cooldown window is not going to be that painful. But additionally, it's like the itemization that you go uh, usually on Vi has a lot of ability haste so in my mind i don't think this is a big enough nerf to really really hurt vi maybe it's going to be picked less maybe not uh, we'll have to see e monster damage reduced from 120 to 100 i don't think this matters too i still think vi and wukong are gonna be gonna be played a lot 
And as long as people uh, like are not willing to play like Gragas and like these champs into Wukong, the AP tanks, uh, then, you know, these champions are still going to be picked. This is more... The most important aspect of these champions is more about the fact that AD carries are so damn strong. Uh, when mid laners and top laners become stronger than AD carries again, then um, Vi and Wukong will be less powerful too. Alright, champion adjustments. Base health regeneration reduced to 7.5 from 8.5. Base magic resistance reduced to 30 from 32. Magic resistance growth reduced. Q monster damage increased, so they're just buffing jungle, okay? And also... Um, all right, W base shield reduced from 35 to 15. Okay, W amount of attack speed from 15 to 35 to 30% uh, at all ranks. Okay, E bonus monster damage increase. So they're buffing jungle nerfing support. That's that's basically the gist of it. And I think it makes sense. It's like if you if you guys look at uh, Rel's numbers right now, uh, she is uh, not uh, really okay. Like. In, in a lot of cases, I would like dig deep and look at the details of it, but this is such a high play rate that uh, this is obviously, obviously bombastic. Uh, this is completely bombastic. And if you compare it to the jungle, you know, in jungle she's still ass, and this is what the whole rework was about. So they're trying to make her stronger in jungle and nerf her in support at the same time. They're trying to rebalance, uh, you know, the, the, the roles a little bit, which is make, which makes sense. Ghost pulled from the patch, I don't know what that is. Sheen base AD ratio increased from 100% to 130%. Sheen bonus AD ratio reduced from 40% to 25%. This is disappointing. Um, I don't see why you would make this change. I don't... Why would you want to make this change? I don't know the reasoning. It's like, you, you want bruisers to buy Essence Reaver? Because AD carries have rather low base AD. Rather low base AD. I, I don't see why you ever want to incentivize bruisers to buy Sheen. Because they are the ones with the higher base AD. And... It's just... I don't know. It's like, Rengar is going to feel this 100%. You can... I saw some Nasus players going Essence Reaver into Navori. That, that is going to be partially stronger with this. Uh, but additionally, it's like... Sheen is going to function a little bit better as a standalone item. I just don't see why you would want to make this change. I don't, I don't see why you want to make this change when Trinity Force and Sunderer is in the game. And I don't see how you can't uh, target the abuse cases, uh, you know, individually. Uh, GP, GP I have to see, right? GP buys so much AD in his, in his build that it might just be a nerf. Maybe when you finish it, it's better. But with more items, I probably would imagine that this is worse. Because you buy just primarily AD, right? You buy only AD. If you think about... If you think about uh, Ezreal, he primarily buys AD. If you think about maybe Lucian and maybe Zaya, they have some attack speed in their build, right? They buy some rapid fire cannon and some Kraken. Uh, what about Bruiser GP? I think that he, too much power is in him critting uh, with... Um, with the changes, so I don't think uh, that Bruiser GP is a thing. At that point, just play a different champ, I think. Uh, AP ratio reduced from 50% to 35, minion AP ratio removed, so uh, this is obviously a very big nerf, uh, and this uh, will essentially uh, kill this off, I would imagine. Uh, this doesn't become as appealing as it was. Keep in mind, this static shift also doesn't have an AD ratio, and... Um, you won't be one-shotting the ranged backline minions uh, anytime soon uh, with Static Shift. Which is obviously good. I think... Um, yeah. Base damage increased from 15 to 90. AD ratio reduced from 60 to 25. AP ratio removed. I, I, I hate to be that guy. Honestly, I like being that guy. Why am I lying? I um, have to point out... When 30.10 released, I mentioned I don't understand why they are putting these random ass AP ratios on all of these AD items. There's going to be wonky abuse cases, and here we go, wonky abuse cases. 
something that is surprising to me here is like it, what I'm missing, right? If I think about what I'm missing from this patch, uh, 1313, I am surprised. I am surprised. So Melio got pretty hit, uh, got hit hard already. Nico got nerfed here, which is fair. Vi got hit a little bit, but I think not enough probably. Kesante was untouched. I'm imagining that they want to see where Kesante lands after the 1312 nerfs, but I don't think that the 1312 nerfs are big enough. Uh, I think that they are trying to keep Kesante viable in terms of solo queue metrics because in solo queue this champion is complete ass. But that's why, like I always say on stream, Kesante is really hard. It's like Kesante is actually a very difficult champion. It's like um, when it comes to uh, Kesante to get him at to, to play him at the high level is difficult, but it's insanely rewarding if you learn how to play it. And Kesante has been meta for so long that if you don't play it at a high level, uh, why are you getting paid? Um, nevertheless. Uh, Let's see how the Kesante, you know, like if we, if we, if we, if we go up, obviously like the win ratio climbs, you know, the win ratio goes up, the higher we go up, the, play, the, the sample size is not that big though, but the higher you get up, the, the win ratio goes up, of course, with Kesante. And the same thing, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, this, if it's true as well for the regions. So you have... LCS 50%, TCL 33%, LFL 41%, let's see LEC. LEC is 62 with 8 games, which is a small sample size. Let's look at the, some of the bigger games. LPL, 80 games, 51. Uh, but obviously, the, the tricky thing with sample size like this is because it's like you have situations where, for example, 369 on a team that is very winning and Wayward on a team that is very winning, Top Eastwoods and also uh, JDG, uh, they are the ones playing the champs. So there's, and they, like, sometimes you have champions being played by shit teams and it hurts the win ratio, you know? Uh, so you always have to dig deeper than this. So we probably walk away from that, you know? Okay, we continue. Yeah, probably I, I'm curious. I would want to see a bigger Kesante hit. And then what do we have? Wukong got touched. Zeri AP with the static shift got touched already. Yumi is out already. We saw uh, the homies in the back play. Gragan, Gragas already got nerfed. Rakan dodging nerfs is kind of crazy. I think Rakan is pretty damn OP. Uh, I don't know what you guys think, but I think Rakan has been played way too much. And I think that the Maokai... I think that the kit of Maokai is a bit too hard to balance. Like every button that Maokai presses is just a bit too strong. Ari has also been dodging nerfs for forever. Like Ari, Maokai, Rakan. These these champions that just have an insanely high presence, you know? Uh, so there's that. Because keep in mind, it's like Rakan has received indirect buffs during all of this. R Lulu got nerfed is a massive Rakan buff. Miliu got nerfed is a massive Rakan buff. Yumi got nerfed, massive Rakan buff. So it's very important to keep that in mind. We might be ushering in a melee support meta with the Blitzcranks and the Nautiluses and the Broms on 1312 and 1313. Um, we'll see. I think I think Rakan is just the best of all worlds because he can buy the support enchanter items and he can buy tank items, very flexible, and he can lane with most ADs. Like you can go, you can go full tank. You can go. Shurelia into AP items. Uh, you you have so many options with Rakan, and uh, yeah, I think Rakan is just very very strong. But someone said in the chat, no one's complaining because Rakan is fun to watch. Uh, I think that makes sense. But I'm just uh, checking, you know, what what is what are things that are always being played and are are, are doing super super well. You know. All right. I think that's about it. I think that's about it. Like in, in case of like, what do I, what kind of direction do I see things heading in? I still think Rel and Ivan are going to be played in major regions, especially when 1312 comes. I think Ivan and Rel are insanely OP and 1312 they're going to be played for sure. How do you feel about the Lucian with CC champs? I don't think that's enough to justify. Like if you're playing melee supports, there are champions that do what Lucian would want to do in those matchups better. 
think about Draven, Kalista. I think that they are just better variants of Lucian. So unless you're getting some kind of draft value, like let's say you pick Lucian, enemy t steals away Nami. Then you pick like, let's say Nautilus, and then you have a good time. That can definitely uh, be a thing, you know? Uh, but other than that, I don't see Lucian being a combo uh, with uh, the melee supports, you know? Yeah, LEC groups and playoffs is on 13-13, so uh, that's that. But um, just so you guys know, 13-12 was also a very, very big patch, and we already did the rundown on this channel. Uh, but the gist of it is like, Ash got buffed, Trinity Force Ash is looking really strong with Kraken, uh, Zeri with Static Shiv, Leblanc with Static Shiv, 13-12, uh, Yumi is out, Milu is out, uh, Lulu got pretty nerfed, uh, Ivan rework, mega buff, Rel rework, mega buff, as an example, you know? Lucian Brom is back, well not necessarily because it's, it's like, for you to get the passive proc, it's like, needs to be hard CC, you know? Uh, so there's that. I'm, I'm not so sure what's coming. I don't think that the Vi Wukong nerfs are enough, by the way. And I think the Nico nerfs are really good, but okay. Uh, I think we, we've covered it uh, as much as we can cover it. Let me just tell my editor that... Yeah, I still think... Like, I still think Lucian Army is a really strong lane. They didn't nerf... Like, they barely nerfed Lucian Army. Like, Lucian Army should still be really OP. Like, the nerf to Lucian on 13-12, um, I don't think that's enough to break Lucian Army. It's like, sure, you don't get passive from your E, but you can trigger your passive from your W too. It is a small nerf, but in a world where everything else is getting nerfed, I think Lucian Nami is still fucking strong. Yeah, but no one ever bans Nami. Like, if you're banning Lucian Nami, everyone bans Lucian. So that conversation is non-existent. And Milio got really hard nerfed. Yeah, but Ari is not always on, right? Ari sometimes is on CD. Like, we're, we're talking about extreme cases for Lucian where you want to, like, squeeze every passive, but I don't think, I don't think the Lucian nerf matters. That's my point, in the context of Lucian Nami. I think Lucian Nami, in a lot of cases, was better than, than, than Lucian Milio. It's like, Lucian Milio, I think, is good because you deny the enemy from Milio. But the slow you get from, from Nami, I think it really enables the champ. I think Lucian Milio has an absurd amount of damage. Uh, there's definitely cases where it was really, really OP, but... Especially now with the million nerfs, I think Lucian Army is looking crispy. Yeah, denying denying Nami from Lucian is, is not a thing, yeah. For sure not. And all I'm saying is, it's like, the relevancy of the CC passive, that's like the only potential case where it could be relevant, is you want a melee support and they took Nami away when you first pick Lucian. That's, that's like the only relevancy I see. And then maybe in solo queue, right? In solo queue it could be a good time. Or like later in team fights, if you're playing with CC champions and you're getting like passive stacks because you know uh, CC is uh, CC is landing, that could be interesting. Yeah, crazy. We don't see any Renata. Renata gets completely murdered by range supports. So in a world where range supports are dominant, you're not going to see any Renata. But now we are going to be slowly begin to see more uh, melee champs. Renata de will definitely be played into into Nautilus and these type of champs. One hundred percent. It's just that Renata can't lane against Yumi. Uh, Renata cannot lane against Milio. She cannot lane against Lulu. She cannot. She has a hard time against Rakan too. I thought it was weird when people like were counterpicking Rakan with Renata, but that died kind of quick. I think that was kind of cope. Renata has way too big cooldowns to keep up. No, just banning Lucian. If you want to deny Lucian Nami, you ban Lucian. That's that's just it.